so excited because we have an amazing panel today. So our panel is critically acclaimed director choreographer uh, Emma Martin, artistic director of United Fall. Uh, hi Emma. Woo! We should have little banners. Um, yeah. We have a multidisciplinary artist and co-founder of Spice Bag Queer Performance Night, Sarah Devereaux. Woo! We do like little disco hands. And we have... Uh, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> that is hilarious. Just in case they were needed for the podcast. You always need tiny hands. I hope you wash those. <laughs> 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 and then we have one half of the hilarious dance comedy dan uh, dance comedy comedy dance duo, Lords of Struss. Did I get that right? I got my words. Yeah, like, there's there's no there's no clean way to describe it. <laughs> Just like your okay. legends. Pounds, variety, variety performers, cabaret <laughs> stars. Yeah. Full time idiots. <laughs> yeah, the best kind. <laughs> uh, lads, it's so good to have you here today. Thanks for joining us on the panel. Wait a sec, what? I'm an artist? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like because uh, I, like I went to art college and then wasn't really doing exhibition type artwork. So then was having trouble being like, am I an artist if I'm not having an exhibition type thing? But then being like, no, I fucking am. And uh, um, it doesn't matter like where the art is or what you do. Like you're an artist, you're an artist. Yeah, go you. Yeah. Emma. <laughs> um, it was probably, so like uh, dance, dance has always been since I was a child. I was just, you know, obsessed um, with dance, but being more about being a performer and a dancer. And then the, I became that and it got very boring as it, cause it, was, it was ballet, which I still adore and all of that. But there was no part of me going into it apart from blood, sweat and tears. Um, and but you know, no part of my own creativity or, you know, you weren't asked to offer anything. So it was probably when I gave up ballet and became a waitress and used to stay up all night watching films. Then I realized uh, what I wanted to do. So I think, you know, was carrying all the sort of dance with me. Uh, yeah, it was when I wasn't doing anything creative, uh, you know, in the world. Uh, yeah. That's what I was doing. Cool. Uh, Keen? Uh, I think I was already like getting doing gigs for a while before I realized that I was an artist. Because uh, I, I didn't know that it was something you could really be. Um, mm. And I was always a creative, like I was creative, I was a creative child and I went to design college and I didn't do that. And then I started doing circus stuff and I started. Uh, like circus stuff, I, I met some people who were doing juggling. I was like, oh, that's good. And then I started, embarrassingly enough, yes, I used to be a juggler. But I started doing that and started getting some gigs and then creating characters and then kind of looking around and not being that interested in a lot of the stuff that was around me. And so making my own way around it. And then, and it was kind of during that when I kind of decided to put more time towards that than doing anything else, then I uh, it was during that decision process. So I'd say that's uh, um, about a year before Lords of Strut was formed. So that's about eleven years ago. Um, I think kind of knowing our seeing art is in books like because back in my day we'd look at the artist's book rather than like you know when you're doing all your research and stuff and just being like having a book about your art is kind of I think what I more so was like that would be like success for me rather mm -hmm. than um being like a traveling around the world with giant solo exhibitions. Yeah. 
like I thought that having like yeah these huge glorious exhibitions that that was what I was meant to be aiming towards was that and that was what success was but yeah. and has that changed since evidently it has um as in has it changed what I think success is yeah, for you, like, so is success, no, like that level of success or like looking in books or having those exhibitions or traveling the world, which would have been like the beacon of what it means to be a successful artist then in university or wherever. Like, yeah. how has that changed for you over the course of your career so far? Yeah, um, I think kind of I'm learning how to just like make my own success and make my own path and like, make art and create the way that I want to and I think success would more so be being able to do that. Keen, was there a moment like that for you where you were like there was this image of success or what it meant to be? Um, it changes all the time uh, and there's there's multiple layers of it uh, so I would have like iconic successfully successful people who may not necessarily be in the same genre don't though most of them are they're more like um you know film and tv people who had a big impact on me like um like steve coogan and sasha baron cohen these kind of people who do a lot of characters and character based comedy but also um are clowns uh, yeah. uh but by but then there's the like just the here and now success, which is, am I going to do a good show? Am I creating material that I want to be uh, creating? Uh, do I re do I reach these very close and immediate goals? Um, Emma, for you, what was success like? Um, it, I, I suppose it was it was constantly shifting, just because you know, say the first period of when I would consider taking uh like dance as a career seriously was at the age of 12 which is ridiculous when you think of a child going that's my career that's what i'm going to be so that was the success to me was becoming a professional ballet dancer which happened and then success didn't it, it didn't look like success at all mm. when you were in that so then you know you hop out of that for a while thinking well i'll give that a break um just to see how I feel about it after a while. And then things started to shift again. Um, so I went and studied and my version of success was um, to come out of college totally uh, like a one woman band, basically, who could be uh, totally independent, you know, f financially not needing much to be my own lighting designer, my own van driver, my own everything. You know, I thought I would perform everything myself. And then, and then that started to shift and, and you started, I started working with other people and collaboration then started to feel like something where success could be achieved. Like for example, the first few collaborations that you have with anyone that you work with are difficult and tricky and you don't know how to share and you don't know how to give other people or their trust. own space and trust and all of yeah. that kind of thing so that then became this this idea of success that i wanted to chase and kind of achieve in a better way that felt more satisfying for everybody but then you know on a macro level it's like i i don't feel like i've experienced success yet and i think maybe my idea of what that is now is like where i feel like all my creative muscles are being flexed in to a level that's really satiating. Just going back on your point there about uh, collaboration and how you're, you moved from, you know, leaving college or from that point of being a solo artist and a, and a one, one woman band into finding your collaborators and kind of building that ecosystem around your practice. Like, what was the transition period? Because it's like what Keane said earlier on, it's a bit like, they're nearly like the steps, aren't they? Because I, I know from Keane that he's at a, you're at a point now where you're collaborating, have been collaborating with people for the last few years and 
it does seem like yeah. this, but how did you go about kind of what informed it, your it felt really um like i had a blindfold on and i brutally threw myself off a cliff without knowing <laughs> There was no sea underneath it because unfortunately the solo artist idea whenever you know when the ideas came into my head of what to do they just became they involved a lot of people and they be, they weren't you know little kind of neat shows that could fit into a van and so that was a bit messy but i was like right just fucking do it boom you know like no money just ask 10 people to work in a show with me you know like that kind of thing so i suppose you know, it was other people like Russia going in the fringe and stuff that allowed that to happen without, you know, so there was no, I, I suppose in terms of the stepping stones, I feel like I'm starting to think about that a bit more now, whereas then it was just like, jump, <laughs> like, you know, you keep going, jump and keep going. And I, I did that a few times and it was, um, it's been quite brutal. Whereas now yeah. I feel like I can be maybe a bit more um, organic about it and kind of go, okay, you know, uh, think about things more in steps. Do you see, do any of you, do you see, do you see a separation or do you perceive a separation between what you do as a creative professional, i.e. like how you sustain your creative practice versus the work that you make. Do you make a distinction between both? Do you, do you view them separately or are they inherently together? I think a, a little bit uh, was kind of like, um, saw more of a distinction between the separate things I was doing because I was like doing my, what I call my art art, which is like, things that might end up in an exhibition or a show or an installation or something. And then I have my more so design stuff like the dirt bird, um, which is like, I say merchandise, but that still makes me feel a bit uneasy because I started to do that because I didn't, I wanted to get my art out into the world in a like more, easy affordable type way rather than everyone gather around come come and see this it was like making things that i could then give or sell to people um, you need to find a word you definitely need to find a word for it sarah yeah yeah I that is it merchandise i agree merchandise isn't the right word either yeah you, like um accessories you know i don't know yeah. it's like no. They're, 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 they're deadly and they are more than um, a bag or a t-shirt or something. You know? A merch. Yeah, they oh, are. Oh, thank you, Keen. <laughs> <laughs> Always finding an opportunity to promote. <laughs> Love your label. You could call it yeah, your label. I don't really know. Um, what? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I kind of saw them as separate things for maybe a year or two and like, it was kind of because other people saw them as separate things, like people who I'd bump into kind of within the first couple of years of college and I'd be telling them I wanted to do this or was kind of slowly starting to make things like, you know, like one off painting on T-shirts and uh, flower pots and that kind of thing. And then they were still, there was just like one moment where it burnt into me and it was just like, yeah, but are you still making work? And it was like, Oh, oh! So you don't <laughs> see this as valuable or like as arty as if I was to slap it up onto a gallery wall, kind of thing. Um, sorry, there's obviously a lot of anger in there still, but uh, yeah. So I saw it separate for a while. The kind of more so the accessories versus the art versus performance kind of thing. But now it's just like very much intertwined but with different mediums i guess i don't know if that answered the question but no that's really good but so you had looked at what you were doing in terms of merch we will yeah. say that for want of a better word until although accessories as keen said bite size art sarah's label sarah's label dirt yeah. yeah what did you say emma Bite-size art. Bite-size art. Bite they're, little, they're little pieces of art. 
Yeah. They're just, um, you can post them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's the best kind, isn't it? Or, 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 like O R T. What's O R T? Let's get to the bottom of this. Is that a new term or? I think it's my. I love it. like, or. Uh, Is that I, a thing? No, did you just come up I, with that? I, I always say it because I feel uncomfortable, but like then I also love being like, I'm an artist. Um, <laughs> so I just. Right to camera. I just, like I call it art, art, or or art because I am half taking the piss out myself because of some weird reason I still feel uncomfortable of labeling myself an artist sometimes so I turn into the like I'll just joke about this but I also make art using humor so it's all intertwined it's all intertwined yeah so okay brilliant Emma just do you you said no when I posed that question of terms of like thinking about what you do in two different ways but as yeah. part of the same whole would you I don't I mean that's quite chaotic I have to say because <laughs> the, the creative practice I suppose is the thing that you're doing all the time and then there's the the sidebar that's like oh shit well I better do that and oh shit I better send that email it's all in the mess of the creative practice so it's not like admin day and of day, I, get, I don't know how to do that and, and I think that would help me hugely in life if I was able to do that but I'm not I'm too much of a chaotic person to but there's, there's genius and chaos Sarah Devro, do you have your hand up or are you trying to move something no. uh, Emma's video is beside me so I was going to try and oh, try. oh yeah because yeah. to me no is that right? It looks different to me. It looks like you're just trying to push something. <laughs> <laughs> We're squeezing. Yeah, on my video, it's like squeezing David and Keen together. Oh, um, um, sorry. Yeah, I just feel the same as Emma. Like, in my head, I'm like, every, every couple of months, I'm like, I'm going to learn how to time or manage my time, time management. And like, I'm going to start just doing like a Monday is going to be emails and admin and <laughs> checking out applying for things and then Tuesday I'm going to do design work and then Wednesday I'm going to write and like that never has happened in my oh, life. Oh I've tried so many times. Have you? It just doesn't. It's a no-go. Keen, what about you? Does that kind of way of thinking work for you or is it all just part of a big... It does. It does work for... <laughs> Uh, me when I can achieve it. Mostly I don't, but I do a bit. And doing the residency in visual one day a week for the past few months has helped in that, give me some structure. But what I tried to do there was have an admin free day, which is which is the stuff that you're talking about, the professional practice rather than the creative practice. Uh, but it didn't. It, I I was unsuccessful in that. I would have some of the day being creative, but I always had some emails and just bits things that i needed to respond to there's just way more responding time needed than we can ever allow for so your whole morning can just go with a chain of emails with a festival or with with this or that fixing some some fire but uh so i would i would do well to be a bit more organized but it, it's not totally separate anyway because there's a lot of I don't have a, 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 any boss, there's no one to answer to. The, I don't have a, the only brand uh, or identity that I need to uphold is my own. So there's a lot of me and everything that I do anyway. So I think it's, there's, there's, you know, there's a bit of creativity going in, into all of it. I always like, if, if I start getting too serious, which I do sometimes if I'm doing too much admin, I find myself really boring. And so I have to like fun it up a little bit by putting stupid headings on emails and stuff like that. <laughs> I've got some of your emails, Keen. <laughs> um, do you, so do you think it would be valuable in thinking that way? Or you think, no, that there's just this kind of like professional thing going on with this creative thing going on. It's part of the whole and it suits you. Or do you think it could be better? Or do you think there is other solutions for it? Well, I work, I work probably a bit differently than the girl than, than um, Sarah and Emma because I work uh, in a partnership with Cormac. So now um, we would schedule uh, business days 
when we used to live in the same city or now we do them online and we'll do like a business call and we'll spend an hour and a half or whatever on call going through these are things we need to do this is the way we're going to respond to that and then we would do them and we would either do them straight away or at our leisure but because i have somebody else i have to check in with and i have to see when he's getting stuff done or whether i'm getting stuff done then that uh that focuses me yeah but so you, it's, I mean, it's, it's the thing that we're all on our own so much when you're working with other people when you have an office to go to when you're in a, a collaboration making a bigger show or whatever you are answerable to other things you've made promises to other people that you have yeah. to uphold when it's just you and you make promises to yourself that you're going to do your admin day on monday and uh you're creative on tuesday and right now wednesday then it's easy to not do it the first one and i think it's the first one for for a lot of people is am i able to survive from just doing this and that's like that's probably the biggest step you'll ever make as an artist is not having to do other jobs yeah. just making a living whatever kind of a living from 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 your art in in whatever kind of shapes that takes and and uh i did realize at the time how big a step that was but what i didn't realize was that every other step was also massive so you get there and then you stay there for most people stay there and a lot of people uh drop out before they before they get up to another one yeah and um, what is it what is it about that period that they are okay i'm committing to going full time as an artist which people throw around this term oh you know it's a luxury to go full time or you're you know with or to have that to actually go full time what is it what is the next step in terms of progression i suppose like the, the next step is usually uh, uh based around income because i've had other like uh successes uh things that would be like milestones whether you realized them at the time or looking back or things that you were are amazed that i achieved certain things like being on big stages or working with certain people um but uh, and you think th those kind of immense things within your performance are going to lead to these next stages, but it, but it doesn't necessarily. So, so the next level of income is like a very huge step to make. Mm -hmm. So it's the precariousness of kind of work. And so you commit, right, and go full time and then actually you have to go start seeking the work and making and finding the work for yourself. In terms yeah. And of that. Yeah, and I think uh, as long as you're as long as you're okay with being uh, financially poor, you can be an artist forever. But uh, a lot of people that doesn't stay okay with, or and that could just be that their situation changes, they're having a kid, or uh, or someone dies, or whatever it is, or it could just be that I didn't think I would have to stay poor. So it's your own personal thing. On I'm actually sick of being poor. But if you can manage a, a way to have a a low income life and keep your expenses low uh then then you can then you can keep doing it yeah so, so most you, most, of, most of the people who i know are keep doing it they are uh single and they don't own anything <laughs> and that's the only way to sustain yeah yeah um do you think there's strategies or something that could be in place to support that to um how how could uh, we as a society, I suppose, uh, support artists better? Or is there is there any quick fix to this in terms of how artists could sustain themselves? Uh, I know I know what you're saying is is that people stay low in terms of their income, so stay low in terms of their expenditure. But is there a way yeah. to like just off the top of your head? I mean, we're not looking for something has happened now in the last couple of weeks with the COVID nineteen. Uh, crisis payments. Uh, mm. Something they said couldn't be done and wouldn't ever work is they've made a universal ba basic living wage. So uh, the, I've never been on the dole before in my life, but 350 euro a week plus uh, uh, gigs or something that you could get. If you could get that as a basic thing and everybody in society got it, they were able to 
do it because there was an emergency and they're flooding the economy with cash instead of giving the money to the banks to flood with cash, which never doesn't really work anyway. It's given uh, a universal basic living wage. So if there was that, and then people can earn on top of that, I think that's a way, because most artists are, are fine with being financially poor because they know how to live financially, uh, or they know how to live uh, a very enriched life without having a lot of money. And that's because of choices that they, uh, that they make, that they put more time into community, they put more time into friends, they, they paint their own house, they not know how to make things nice, uh, have, eat good food without having to spend loads of money. It, it, the, the categories of things that we want are a bit different. So a, a, a basic living wage uh, for everyone in the country, I think would allow a lot of people to get more creative in their lives. Yeah. Um, well, it, do, it does depend what I'm doing. Uh, if, I, uh, if I'm creating, anyway, my first kind of port of call usually when I'm creating is not sta moving around the room. It is sitting down and writing and it's getting some of my thoughts out and I have ideas and a brainstorm. I like to walk around and stuff. So I need privacy for that. But sometimes I could have to do that on the road. I could be making something or fixing a problem in a show around the back of a circus tent uh sitting on the grass and and have to do it there and then that will inform what what i'm doing um but then if i'm like sitting down and answering emails i could have to do that on a train while i'm getting somewhere is i don't it would be a luxury for me to have that the same thing all the time and it would probably also uh, It'd be unrealistic because I am on tour and I do have to respond to things in different situations a lot. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, like space and place in terms of you and what you do, how, like, is, is that important or what kind of space and place do you use at the moment to create your work? Um, like I work from my amazing studio, A4 Sounds in Dublin. And like, I, I don't have a set space there. It's a, um, you kind of, like I have a huge locker that's bursting out of seams, but it's um, more so there's like lots of different areas to work in. So I, I kind of enjoy doing um, like design type stuff there or drawing and uh, more so computer things there. And then um, at home is, more so where I would uh, write or like write performance ideas or character ideas and stuff because I like I just have one housemate so I can dress up as a seagull and wander <laughs> around the sitting room for a few hours at home a lot more easily than um, <laughs> in my studio but uh, yeah like do you think being at home and that idea of being in your own space, but it also is your home, do you think that plays a part in your work, maybe your character? Because you're saying that the work that you create is kind of like you're writing the text and the development of characters that you do. Like, do you think being at home actually informs those characters and the work you make? Or is it particular, you know? No, I, well, I think it's just to do with the quietness and like, that I'm just there with myself and pen and paper or my phone or laptop or whatever that um and can just read stuff out loud and stuff is kind of is that what you sorry um yeah no, just in terms of like being at home is, is, does that play like do you mean in general that, or do you mean COVID home time oh actually general versus COVID home time is a brilliant one. <laughs> the idea of like how you worked before at home versus now that you're stuck at home making work because this has an impact on what you've, what you've done, what you do. Well, I feel like um, the past couple of weeks that I'm like kind of for the couple of weeks running up to this whole insane 
lockdown, uh, I kind of made a promise to myself to get more into like doing notebook work and like very looser drawings and ideas and stuff because that was something that like I would fill a couple of notebooks a month back in college time and a couple of years after that whereas I feel like the last few years I'm more so I'm going to do this drawing and it's going to become a notebook or I'm going to write this thing and then I'm going to perform it on this date and maybe at that that uh it became really like structured and uh so now sorry tangent but um now no, no, no. like I want to like uh try and draw and do ideas and like write things a lot more freely or something and um I've been doing like bits but I've I'm also trying not to buy into the whole like I need to be really productive right now because this is a horrible insane time and I'm find it very hard so like you know I felt like in the first week and a half of this I got about six different messages from people trying to collaborate and they amazing ideas I was like that sounds great I, I I wish you well but I'm just going to maybe sit down and maybe there's actually it. power in that then you got yeah. an email off me was like come on you talk about your practice <laughs> that um this is pretty much one of the only things that I did say yes to because I was like I know the because your email was so detailed I know the level of work that's involved and the time frame and the people that I was like yeah I feel like I want to do this and that I can do this and mm -hmm. that it could lead to like you know good things but because creativity and entrepreneurship and art and all that that is what I'm continuously learning how to do better so I was like yes that would be a wise thing to say yes to yeah. <laughs> maybe I don't know we'll see at the end of this <laughs> uh, Emma um, space place how important has it been in the development of your practice and your work um so I think um like I, I need a certain sense of uh, stability, even if it's a corner of a room, and that's that's stability to me. So, like for example, uh, a lot of the time my creative practice um, will happen with other people, with with dancers in a room, and um, it's it's on and it has to, it's messy but it you're trying to pretend it's not messy um, but then you know uh being i need to be somewhere that is where i can genuinely be messy and that's private as uh keen was saying so like that's a corner in a room in my house where i could pull an all-nighter because i have to separate my mother life my life as a mother and then my life as being uh, more you know bleh, sort of let it all hang out kind of thing so um that's massively important to me and then I suppose having a place to go to to have a creative practice with people I want to work with um you know having somewhere that that's in my area or my environment is it has massively helped my practice over uh, the last number of years, you know, so deciding to base myself in Carlo and um, having a relationship with visual and all of those things have given me a sense of ground, which I don't know how well I would have gotten on um, or, you know, how uh, healthy and mentally healthy I would have been if I had, if I was you know, constantly on the hoof looking for somewhere to work and, you know, um, and, you know, moving house every, or just not having a table and not having that kind of thing, you know. Um, so, so hugely important to you in terms of Hugely important. Of and doesn't need to be, yeah, it doesn't mm. need to be anything that, other than somewhere I can put my notebooks and my paint and my board and, you know, things like that, like, so. Yeah and burn my uh, Palo Santo, but, <laughs> but 
Yeah, so, so place is massively important. And actually now with this COVID uh, lockdown where, you know, all day is family time, um, I have relocated my space out to a polytunnel because I can, <laughs> I can smoke oh. and close the door and be on my own in that space. You know? And plant sports. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so the office has, uh, has become YouTube land and... Uh, oh my God, send pictures. <laughs> of me in the polytunnel. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, but, but that said, you know what, what I am um, starting to feel, because the odd time I would come in to visual just on my own. And it feels, I feel like I need private time, but actually... Sometimes if it's not a room where you can close the door, you know, like an actual studio studio, because, you know, sometimes it's on it's a stage. It's really like, oh, but I just want to noodle around the place and just close you know, the door. And close the door. Yeah. So I'm starting to think. You'd actually get the bus up to Sarah's gaff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. How can I do that here? You know, is there a room I can clear out and just have that private um, movement time? Yeah. Would polytunnel fit onto the stage in visual? <laughs> uh, yeah. There's a performance in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can bring in Keen's potatoes as well. It'll be perfect. Oh and Sarah, you've got a number of wigs. We can look at the collaboration already. Um, I, 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 just thinking on it a little bit more. So it's, it, it's kind of if it's a big question and kind of. I'm, my mind was spanning over all time that I've been making stuff. But I think if I, I can de- condense it down a little bit now that I left Cork, uh, it's, it's actually much more difficult because in Cork, I had all my stuff there. So I've like props from all different shows. All my costumes are all there. I have um, easy access to them. And I also I have a circus space there. That, mm. um, that because I'm one of the people who set up, I can go in at midnight and work until five o'clock in the morning if I want, or I can go there in the morning. Where and, Sorry, where is that in Cork that you were? South by the, it's near the marina. Okay. Yeah, it's it's circus factory. It used to be in Camden Palace, and then it was on the Keys, a, a building that's been knocked. All these buildings have been knocked since they've been. The economy's yeah. going great again. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, it's, out in a, it's out in a rented space, and uh, anyway, but, but having your stuff and a place where you can leave stuff and leave a bit of a mess is is very important. Having to pack up every day, move stuff, you're kind of packing away some of your ideas that might never really come out again. Yeah. studio like that's what I I kind of probably wanted to talk a bit more about earlier when we were talking about place and stuff like I think without if I didn't become a member of my studio I don't know where my life would be because it was so it's such a like lovely place to be everyone is uh everyone's is very creative in very different ways and it's just like this really like nurturing place to be and um everyone has a lot there's a lot of support there from people the people who run it and but just the people there as well um that uh yeah like kind of being in that kind of space is very sorry I, my brain just went fried there no that, that makes perfectly like the, the people that it's actually people in a particular place has actually yeah. changed the tra- trajectory of your career or where you are now because of those people in that particular place. Yeah, definitely. Like, because it's a, a very open place as in how, how it's run, but also everyone, it, it's just very sound. Whereas like, mm. you know, when I was looking around for studios it, and, and some artists like Emma, you were saying you just, you want that closed door. Like I, I don't know how I would function as well if I was in a like private studio, like just by myself as well. Like, how different life would be. Yeah. That's 
how I went. So mm. I think I'm too hungry that I can't finish a sentence now. <laughs> and, and then I get here and it's like, no. I've managed to drain the light <laughs> out of you. Are in front of me for the last two hours. <laughs> Eat the chum. Eat the chum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Keen, is there any, is there any, do you engage, is it just your immediate circle that you engage with or is there like wider circles that you kind of like, how, do you have the opportunity to talk about things like this? No, well, there's certainly nothing formal and, and I welcome it. I think it's a good, I, I think it's a good, I think it's a good thing to do. Clarifies your own thoughts on things a bit and also yeah. can uh, leave the seeds behind to, to solve some of the things that we, that we come across um, and I would like to engage with something more like this, but we now it's slower. We don't, we don't normally have time. I got go, go two hours out of my week or even if it's every month, it's like, we're so, so time poor that um, we don't, we're just putting out fires all the time. So I think now I think there is time to do things like this. And I think, this can lead to creating more support. Um, even if it's just with each other, you're just clubbing together. It doesn't necessarily have to come from a financial place. And it's back to the other thing we were talking about was like, how do we organize our time? How do we get stuff done? Admin versus practice and all this kind of stuff. There's ways to pool resources. I think what every artist needs is a manager. Uh, and none of us ever find them because that person doesn't exist. But a lot of the things that they just need a little bit of guidance and whether it's on your accounts or your admin or there can be shared supports like that. And it could be like um, like a career ad advisor sitting down with you every now and then and going, where are you doing? Are you getting this thing done? Remember that other thing you were doing? Now, some of that stuff sounds like a pain in the hole, but there, it, there could be some ways that we create some of these kind of systems that just help us move through this stuff without getting so stressed because we say yes to a project and we end up doing everything on it when yeah. we shouldn't do everything on it yeah yeah That's and exactly. also you have to remember as much as you like doing art there is somebody out there who likes coming in and be like keen did you get that done did you get yeah. people that just love organizing as well so go find a new organizer yeah no i have those people in my life and i'd be able to do nothing without them and yeah. it would happen organically and uh, yeah, I I can't work on my own. I can get bits done, but I can't be a one man band. I've tried. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, Emma. Um. Well, I suppose I feel um like when I'm in productions and uh or you know making something, there's usually quite a few people involved. So that's like this temporary family. Um that I have and then I really miss them when that's over um, but then I actually have um, you know a daughter and a partner and, and so there is that sort of family unit as well and then outside of that I really enjoy being an island on my own uh, having my own space and quiet and no noise because there's quite a lot of noise going on anyway mm -hmm. in my life or in the life around me so um yeah i i value i value that um island time and i've loved this discussion yeah and i am connecting with friends that i don't get to talk to we've organized to meet up virtually for like drinks on saturday and i'm like that's Sesh. so weird but Sesh. um yeah. session yeah but um I, I, like i don't know if i'd like that sort of formal um peer group of like because I think it's like I, I think sometimes we're all quite afraid to be alone or something and I think this is like a big shake of like it's okay to be alone and to be to go inwards you know and maybe that's you know it's not for everyone but maybe uh, it's, it's okay to have that sometimes as well and then to know that the support there with a peer group or with people you trust or whatever, which is brilliant as well. But I'm, I'm not looking for that, is what I'm saying. I'm not looking for uh, a group of art people um, <laughs> to get online with. <laughs> I'm just going, I'm just, just on my own and that's grand, you know, so. Um, but then, you know what? <laughs> I am, you know, I am really 
absolutely privileged that I do actually work with a producer yeah. who acts like a manager as well. And that is completely different to you, Keen and Sarah. So I do have that person that I have to answer to. Yeah. Um, and that will remind me of, but do you remember you were talking about doing that thing? And I'm like, oh, that's gone no further. But there's a responsibility there to somebody that you have to kind of answer to. So mm. that does keep the fire under my ass, uh, which is good. And I don't, if I didn't have that, you know, <laughs> who knows? Who knows? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like you want to kind of be a bit more active on social media, but like maybe in a bit of a different way that doesn't involve as much like energy because I just I just feel knackered. I just feel knackered. So uh yeah, I'm gonna more so like maybe share the drawings that I've been doing and like um I've been chatting to lots of people like I kind of put up a thing about like anxiety and stress and like how, how's everyone handling it and just ended up talking to like 25 different people from all over the world who just ended up replying and some people in Spain who are they people who've been following your work but... yeah so just yeah. like we just kind of had like a nice conversation and uh we were just talking about how how we were coping and stuff and uh but then sorry my elderly neighbor just walked by the window so I've been a lot more active with my neighbor it's like <laughs> right on the street so this old man I say he's in his 90s he's so cute and he just walks by and then we have little chats and he's yeah so I've been having more like waves with neighbors and that kind of thing anyway um <laughs> I think well, I to Emma, do you, Emma, do you, have you found any kind of, um, any activity in that, in that, in relation to that? Did you, did you hear it? Are you still there? I'm, I'm here, yeah. I, my uh, electricity went there for a few oh, minutes. <laughs> so I, I missed the question, but oh, I'm, get, oh, I'm getting the sense of... Yeah, the, it's the idea of the kind of, um, sort of, Agile kind of workplace transformation that's happening. You know, like I was explaining how David and I have, with our work and um, with with this project, how how we've adapted and changed, and we're using technology in new ways as well now. Um, mm. But one of the things that we kind of explored around is the idea that with um, with all of this transformation, there's um, more kind of co-creation or collaboration, and co-creation is at the heart of that. Um, so Kian and Sarah were just sort of sharing um, their experiences of that. I was wondering, have you have you had any experiences of that in this last while? Not really. I mean, I, I find myself retreating quite a lot from the online yeah. uh, world. Um, so, sorry, thanks, love. Uh, from the on, online world, uh, I, I feel it's... Um, I don't know, I'm not feeling very attracted towards it at the minute and it's quite solitary and I'm really enjoying that. Um, you know, kind of having a very um, structured day, but quite slow, like <laughs> everything's slow, like making meals is quite slow and, and the pace of things. And then, um, yeah, being able to, you know, stay up much later into the night by myself and so it's it's a nice time and I suppose it's it's like um I haven't had an impulse to kind of go okay how can I how can I be online or how can I continue making or replacing what I was supposed to be doing in this time with putting it online I just I can't do that I don't think I want to do that so um I suppose I'm holding on to like a slightly longer term goal which is you know, September, August, September, and and sort of allowing this time to enrich in that project. Um, but yeah, I mean, there there has been a push towards online. I've been finding, and I'm totally resisting it. I 
I don't want to spend more time on the computer. I already spend more time than I want on the computer. Uh, so it, it, it's like, it's, it's, it's much healthier for me to be, be doing, be live performances, be around people, make stuff, move my body than more time on the computer. Yeah. That being said, when this is finished, I'm going to be editing some videos that I made yesterday. But like, so that, that will, that'll happen anyway. I don't, but otherwise it's like, geez, your whole life would be consumed with, with online. Yeah. And it's kind of in the last couple of weeks became quite an overwhelming place as well. Like there was just, uh, suddenly I'm in so many group chats and like people being like, oh, do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? And it's just, it's a, I, I'm finding the internet a bit overwhelming right now mm. um in this very moment <laughs> <laughs> no i agree i agree to this but um <coughs> yeah no sorry as in like uh there's a lot going on online right now that um mm. yeah like i do i i don't want to fully remove myself but i just i'm just kind of taking a bit of a step back and um yeah, like what Keen was saying, like I want to like do lots of drawings and paintings and then share them rather than yeah. like the more Be live I was coming up with and um uh one kind of real life arty thing that I'm in, more so engaging with people is I'm doing like a painting on my front window because I'm like right onto the street. Uh so that's something that's fun and that like uh because i first i put up this picture onto the window uh everything's fine <laughs> and just because my friend walked by and then i left it up and saw different people kind of you know bringing them out of the kind of trodden along feeling stressed and then seeing this funny picture up um so it made me then do like a big painting and I'm going to try and do that maybe every two weeks or something to change the painting for the people who are walking by to kind of just give them a bit of a a, a jolt out of. Well, what have you got there now? Well, what I have here now, okay. <laughs> um, I don't know if you can see it, but it's two snakes. Oh. And uh, it, one of them is saying to the other, did you wash your hands? Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, snakes don't have hands is the joke. Yeah. <laughs> but a big bird did a huge poo on it, so it's actually a collaboration with my local <laughs> uh, friend. That was a choice. <laughs> it was a choice, artistic choice. Yeah, so now I'm going to draw or do a painting around the poo, so it's going to be a seagull pooing out the poo. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, that's brilliant. <laughs> in, in terms of like all this influx to the digital and the and the web and social media and everything, yeah. actually, what's really it goes back to the idea of compassion for yourself and compassion for others that Emma was talking about, which is like actually just small, small yeah. tokens, small offers, yeah. you know. Yeah, like people are stopping and giving me a wave, and like some neighbors would who I would still kind of have been waving at or whatever over, over the last two years are like stopping at my window to like to enjoy the painting and to like show their kids or to like wave at me or say hi to me or whatever and it just it made me feel nice and I was like that's that's going to be something that I think I can give right now at the level that I want to give. Mm. yeah I mean, there is one thing that um, I don't know if you were going to talk about this or if you've covered it and I missed it, but um, is that like what it is making me think of, and maybe I'm reading too many scary New York Times or Guardian articles about yeah. this being the beginning of many pandemics to come. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Sarah's like, what? <laughs> well, I've heard that, yeah. Like, but um, I suppose what it has made me think about is like, okay, well, how do we, um, how do we, or how do I, because I can't think of what other artists need, but how do I 
um, become more um, independent in a way and, and self-sustaining, you know, and even, you know, planting uh, things. And um, I have the luxury of having an empty farmyard barn that needs a bit of work and thinking, okay, well, maybe I can put a floor in here. Maybe I can do something with yeah. this. You know, just thinking like, you know, how can I, how can I actually make things less, uh, what's the word? Like creating with less. How can I create with less yeah. and, um, and, and provide more myself um, in a sort of cooperative kind of fashion? So that's kind of exciting, you know, like maybe I can grow enough cauliflowers to feed dancers for four weeks, <laughs> you know. <laughs> going to take more cauliflowers now. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, or, um, yeah, um, maybe. Well, I think maybe that's a lovely way to think about it. Like, I suppose that goes back to that question of what does a thriving artist look like after all this? And I think that's lovely as well in terms of, what Sarah, you've said in terms of small gestures and meaningful gestures and, uh, and connecting with people on an individual level. And then the idea of like sustainability with Emma and, and kind of creating this sustainable structure in a way, a hub where you can be creative. And I, I, th I think that's really lovely. And then, yeah. Yeah. And it probably it throws up a load of questions as well about like, you know, who... Uh, who are we making for mm. you know what I mean like Sarah like maybe you've a better frame for that question David and it's a, it's a bigger part of this discussion that you want to broach but like Sarah you're now you know affecting um the passers-by and the neighbors that you mightn't see on a regular basis because you're based more in Dublin and your audience is different you know and and here I am kind of going okay I would imagine if festivals did fall away for the next few years and imagine if you know obviously that's not going to happen but you know even for a year or two yeah. we've all lost out on some festivals and it's like well you know I've got like a whole road of neighbors could I not make a show for them yeah you know in my barn and yes. is that not a <laughs> totally beautiful thing to do you know and they're my audience and it doesn't have to be like well hopefully now we'll get to New York and <laughs> you know like this kind of you yeah know, like, you know yeah so, so that's bringing into question like who is your audience what does it mean because Sarah you'd have like a massive audience and like Keen you have a strong audience as well in terms of your digital platforms mm -hmm. and, the, and the way you kind of present your practice and present mm -hmm. yourselves online and um that's interesting that in a time like this, Sarah, you're talking about actually small tokens and small gestures and actually how that may impact or inform your practice down the line. And then Emma, you're, you're, you're on the turn circuit and doing venues. And now you're like, actually, I might just make work in my barn and bring the neighbours over. And I'm just like, oh my God, yeah. The possibilities are like endless. Yeah. Um, but also it does bring into question then, what happened, how do people feel? Keen, you're kind of in a similar boat where the, I mean, you had everything lined up for the summer, uh, for the rest of the year, kind of some bits and pieces, even internationally. And that's all been stripped away. So how has that kind of informed your vision of the future for yourself as an artist and for Lords of Strut? And how you engage with audiences? Yeah, I have no idea. Like, it's, it's like uh, what Emma just said, it's like, who are we making for? So... And I know where and who I'm making for. Uh, it's a fringe festival in Australia, or it's the Cat Laughs in Kilkenny. I know, I know how to handle that, uh, or Dublin Fringe Festival. But if I don't know where I'm going to be doing the stuff, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to make necessarily. And um, I have what, what I have been thinking is that uh and i've been thinking this for ages but i think it's i'm thinking of it more broadly now is that uh rte rte now has become important again i i actually thought it was important before anyway but the that's our main vehicle in ireland for um uh that that people tune into it's, 
still more than Netflix, it's still more than ending. But there's very little of the uh, input from artists in Ireland in it. Of course, it takes artists to make it, but where's the arts shows? Did you see, though, how I think literally today they're commissioning uh, performers for RTE and there's a nice, a nice bit of money. <laughs> I'll send you a link. It's like a grand for a performance. I will do anything. But it's um it is for RTE and it's for performers. So like let's get on that and you know. send it on. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, but I but I've been thinking for ages that RTE needs uh, an ear to the ground for the arts. Oh, definitely. And it needs to go around and it needs to get really creative, and like in touch stuff happening on RTE. And there's loads of different ways that it could be performed. But you know, the, there's loads of different opportunities for different kinds of shows on it. Yeah. But it needs to engage with pe people and not production companies that just uh, make uh, mainstream stuff about how to put on makeup and this kind of stuff. I know that isn't totally what RTE do. They do, do, they do make good content shows and yeah. they have continued to make good content shows, but it doesn't really cross over into the arts very much. Yeah, uh, no, totally agree. And I, I think it's like one of the, you know, the, if this is gone, I'm going to be really disappointed if, if the festivals are gone because that's the best place to perform, whether it's uh, in, the, in a comedy tent or in the field in the electric picnic or all together now, or it's in the um, Alnaslow Town Festival. They are like, the, it's the best stuff comes out of people and they're more ready to engage with um, whatever is put in front of them and they look at things as fun instead of looking at it too critically and the uh, uh, festival in Carlo where I think it's the last time I was talking to you Sarah at the Arts Festival in Carlo it's like Carlo never feels like that and yeah. so if those mass gatherings are gone I really don't know what to replace them with because that's the best place for me to do shows. It's better than doing shows in Dublin Fringe Festival or other kind of theatre scenarios is yeah. the broader people in a celebration way, not just going to see something. Mm. I think it like in the future for like how we can uh, work how you know you can get uh, levels of support in work or make create good practice in work there's, there's lots of stuff there but i think right now being in lockdown uh, has shown me that um it's i need to be healthy i uh, i need so when it all when we're all meant it all started and it was like oh here's all this time to get really productive i said like, i can't that isn't nothing is coming out it's uh, it's creating kind of anxiety. So I needed to go gardening and that makes me healthy. And then I'm in a safe place that I'm standing. And from, from there, I can get creative and I can have good thoughts about, about, about stuff. And about the future? And yeah, about the future or even like some silly, you know, like, you know, write a story about uh, sticking a leaf up your bum, but who you know it doesn't it doesn't matter. But it's it's it coming from a place. First of all, I need to be okay. Yeah, uh, health is a good one, and actually, it's something that's not self care and looking after yourself and health enabled in, in being able to do anything is so valuable. But I think artists a lot of the time, or the creative industries as a whole, kind of neglect that part of them because it's just like on to the next, on to the next, keep going, don't they sink. Do. Okay. But I also find them very. I also find most people involved in the arts uh, really sane people uh, who do have a really. Uh, they may not. They may neglect themselves and not take great care of themselves, but they do have a great understanding of the world and what it means to be healthy and have a good perspective on 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 life. And and yeah, and that really supports practice. Emma, what yeah. does what does thriving look like for an artist? Uh, maybe post post pandemic. Post pandemic, um, geez, I don't know about post pandemic, but uh, 
one thing I feel like mid pandemic <laughs> is that there's definitely less noise in my yeah. own head. Um, you know, where I can actually listen more and I, I can let things come, come through more and they feel then more organic cause they're not being squeezed out through me. Um, there's something, this is going to sound a little bit wanky, but there's something I think about compassion. And that's also maybe something that I've, um, that ties into the success thing with me that, um, you know, self-compassion and then compassion for everyone else that you're working with. Um, that that has been something that um, um, has become just very apparent to me that um, that's something that helps everybody work well together and um, I feel like you know there is there is a sort of um, globally now there is a there's a the consciousness of compassion feels a bit more awake and alive and I would hope that that's carried on beyond post like, post pandemic you know in every sector like in the economy in in politics that there's a more humanitarian kind of um approach because we don't have many humanitarian leaders in the world they're economic leaders they're capitalist leaders and and i think this is just such an opportune time to cultivate uh ways that we can work compassionately that's not about you know who's the best who gets the most money who gets the most shows who gets the most tours you know what i mean that it's more actually like you know, art is like an inherent human expression and, you know, and that all art should be viewed in that way. You know, um, some of it is, is entertaining as well as artistic and, and then o other things are just artistic, like art house cinema or like uh, sound uh, oh, oh, as against albums of music you know what I mean so like more commercial mainstream music more versus commercial mainstream yeah. and both both are absolutely you know art but um I feel yeah it, it's just a great time to kind of check in on that and kind of go that's definitely something I want to uh, that's a feeling I want to carry with me into post pandemia um and uh that's exciting yeah brilliant Sarah what um, does what does a thriving artist look like, smell like, taste like? Um, Cherry popsicles. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're trying to be healthy now. Come on. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I, yeah, no like sugar. More so, talking about what what did you say? I'm at mid pandemic or yeah, yeah, mid pandemic. Like, yeah. A little bit different in that I actually feel like I've had waves of surges of creativity in the last couple of weeks even the couple of weeks before all this but uh, I feel really burnt out so like my energy levels aren't matching what I want to do like I've had loads of performancey ideas that I could do online over these weeks to kind of keep spirits up but I'm just like, I don't have the energy to match it. And when I tried to do one or two performance things, kind of like two weeks ago, like I felt dead for the next two days. I just felt like I I'm quite depleted right now, but I'm having the creativity, like ideas, but I'm just not able to carry them through right now. So I'm trying to, what Emma said, be more compassionate with myself because I'm, like sorry what Emma said about a few years ago where she was like this one woman band almost like that's how I always see myself like do you know um your man in uh Mary Poppins with the whole band on his back <laughs> um and I'm trying to learn how to not do that too much because I think I get very excited by like creativity and ideas and then I feel like this burning need to do them but then I just burn myself out because I'm just like give way too much to creativity and not enough to like myself as in to like eat sleep get fresh do so, you think it's because everyone has stopped like had to stop 
that everyone's now like, and I even feel it myself, everyone's like, oh, oh my God. Uh, this I is what a, a bit of a burnout. Anyway. A, a bit of a burnout. I mean, I had a fucking horrendous burnout last summer. And it was because I took on way too much and I wasn't able to see that I took on way too much. And then my body just like, once I got the, the thing done, then I just like totally wiped myself out. And that's been kind of coming up and down kind of since last summer. So, but I'd still keep trying to push myself. So I was mm. like, I burnt out, but then I was like, oh, well now I have to do a fringe show. And then did the fringe show and then felt dead to the world again. And then was like, okay, well now I have to do all my Christmas markets, got through them and then just been really burnt out. Thin. So I'm just trying to like somehow be able to keep doing what I'm doing and to be able to perform and to create and to entertain, but to do it in a way that I don't destroy myself. And that's what I think success will be to me. Mm. Uh, I've just realized that's what success would be to me. If I can continue to do what I'm in doing and to enjoy it a bit more without getting overly burnt out and stressed and to be able to say yes and to be able to say no when I need to because I just would have found that very hard to say no to an opportunity felt like rotten I was like what if this was the one and it's like <laughs> oh, yeah it's always a big one this is the one yeah. The, yeah the one opportunity what is it going to suddenly make me a millionaire like no so it's just I guess success personally will be when I can not overly burn myself out and to still create and to enjoy it a bit more because I think even though what I do is very like humor based and comedy and color and stuff like I think I was doing it a lot too much for others and like one for clients with no cooking and stuff relearn how to create for myself a little bit more but at the same time to give to other people I don't know yeah <laughs> Bye. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.